You guys will not believe what's happening, but we are welcoming you back to What Have You. I'm Rachel uh, Jankovic. I'm Becca Merkel. And we are alive. We are even, dare I say it, thriving. <laughs> I doubt I dare. I don't think I should dare say that. That's, uh, that's but we're little... alive and we're podcasting. And you may notice a strange new sound to us today because <laughs> we are in Ben's old pickup truck it's the 1960 it's not running lest you not no, be able to hear us can you tell how echoey it yeah, is in here in it's all metal chamber. it's like metal everything <laughs> so anyway yeah. guys so we're delinquent but we did recently gather ourselves up to podcast and then the whole time <laughs> we just looked at john singer sergeant pictures on the internet <laughs> We sat next to each other on our phones, <laughs> googling Sergeant paintings and showing them to each other, going, "No, no, look at this look one! Look at this one! This one's amazing!" <laughs> and um, but the reason is because he's good, and it was worth the afternoon. It was it worth, really it was. was worth it. To, well, it, was. it wasn't the whole no. afternoon. We just did it instead of podcasting that we did well, that Well, it was because we only had a, a window of like 50 minutes and then seven minutes of that got taken up already with <laughs> and a And then random... we decided to just devote the and other we 40 like, well, to it. it's too late now. Anyways, what I'm saying is we may be slammed, busy, we may have too many projects, we may be doing all kinds of things like that, but... We're not so busy that we don't spend an hour <laughs> g- googling up other John Singer Sargent pictures. And it's, you know what, honestly, the ones that everyone has seen of his are not nearly as good as all the ones that nobody has. They're it's really, like, well, they're good. It's just that you already saw it, so you're not blown yeah, away no, by it. Yeah, no, you don't. Uh, the one of the little girls standing around among the Ming pots. It's fine. It's yeah, just, but it he, we settled on the fact that we were sort of discussing how does he catch so much life, real life in his paintings, and yeah. it and it is amazing. And I, my theory is that none, no one is having a mirror face. Everyone no. looks like they wouldn't be looking like that if they could see themselves. <laughs> But that he's really accurately he's, catching. He's, their... he's putting into their face like an alive moment. Between well, it's coming and going. It's, yeah. it's yeah. It's and so because he catches an expression about to happen or having just happened. Yeah, you get the sense that the person's really alive because you feel the whole story. Yeah, it's sort of like the early. What are those bursts that that um iPhone photos sometimes do oh. where you accidentally take a whole sequence that looks yeah. like a short video. Mm-hmm. It's I only ever do that feature on accident. It's, it's yeah. I never meant to do that. It just happens on accident. But my point is he does that. He manages to capture it. So you yeah. can see that we could very easily think... turn this into a whole episode <laughs> about well, how because I think that what happens with Sargent is you don't just see the person you see what Sergeant saw in the person. Well, like, you can tell if he thinks they're funny. Yes. And you can tell or if he pompous. thinks they're a little pompous or smug, or if they're or just lovely a, and lively. A bit or, of a diva. Yes. Or or really beautiful and unaware. Yeah. Which I think was his, uh, some of those Middle Eastern ones that he did. And like yeah, the, some and of the, the uh, And the Italian girl with the fan looks like mm-hmm. it's the very lovely but not mm-hmm. concentrating on their yeah. loveliness. Just sort of and lovely in like passing. some woman with an uppity face oh, with her standing eyes. Standing in a big, pompous, big, huge, puff sleeve droopy bodice <laughs> monstrosity. And she just looks mean-spirited <laughs> just and just thin-hearted or the guy with the glasses who's just looking like kind of slack-jawed and the guy with the <laughs> with the mustache that's like taking off somehow <laughs> and then and then that one kind of plump cute happy lady that he did sort of from behind her, like where it's like a, yes. a profile from behind her cheek yeah. kind of but she just looks like yeah. A good piece of news. She it's, looks like a lot of fun. It's true. So you can anyway, see that we spent our time wisely. Our... <laughs> we sp- <laughs> and now you should know that we're... Okay, I had a story I was going to tell you. All we right. just got finished with the NSA alumni dinner. You should know that it is 
What time is it? It's in late. In the cavernous dark it's, night. It's late on a Saturday it's night. It's probably 9.30. Pretty late. Late for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark. We're in a truck. Speaking of which, I have to interject this before, that I agreed to do a uh, <laughs> South African radio <laughs> thing live. I was like, yeah, sure. And then it turned out to be from midnight to two in the morning, which was, I was like, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to sparkle at midnight to two. <laughs> I really would be afraid to listen back on what I might have shared with, with South Africa. <laughs> and actually, I'll tell you a breathtaking oh, moment that occurred. So, and actually, I happen to know the guy who interviewed me, or his wife listens to our podcast. So, oh. big, big shout out to you here. <laughs> and I sent him a picture in Skype of my floor loom because from the wife wanted to know. Oh, man. Wanted to, said she listens to us even though she does not know what a floor loom is yet. Oh, so you got so it. So, I you was like, well, let's, let's resolve that. So, it might be a good ASAP. time for you to apologize out there, South Africa. Dear South Africa, forgive whatever I was doing upon your radio <laughs> in the middle of the night. No, but I, I had to download the Skype app. Okay. Well, I'm like sitting in bed at midnight. <laughs> you Skyped from bed? Well, it was just audio. That's just tempting fate right it was there. O- no, I got up. I was okay. just waiting. I was say, just Rachel, sitting I in bed because Luke was there and I was like, you know, kind of whatever. But that was the breathtaking moment because I was in my PJs and not at all, you know, looking to do a video conference. <laughs> <laughs> and and what starts ringing is a Skype video call, ooh, a Skype ooh. video chat. And I was like, ah! <laughs> It wasn't. It was all just audio. But yeah. it at the time, I had a terrifying moment when I thought, am I supposed Surely to be not. up here <laughs> in video? Because, Throw a blazer on over yeah, the PJ. Oh, dark times. Anyways, that, that worked out fine, and I stayed awake. Congratulate me, everyone, for that job. Good job. Okay. That's just say this is all a prelude to what really right. tickled We're me ready. super hard We're tonight. For it. So we go to this dinner, and... It was an right. NSA, as soon as the New dinner. St. Andrews alumni event dinner thing is yeah. where we were. And we were tired. Luke painted all day. We were busy doing stuff all day. It was like a very, yeah. it was an industrious sort of a sure. Saturday. So then you go barely squeaking into a dinner. Mm-hmm. And then we were tired. And then we mm-hmm. leave the dinner. Okay. And we drive to Winco because right. tomorrow after church we're having a big yeah. bunch of people that was to lunch. rash that was rash of you no it's fine but it, we're doing that tomorrow but our house is not exactly yeah there right it's there enough that i think we can feed people in it it is not sure. there in the sense of yeah come admire how much we're ready right. it's not that it's sort of like come get a feeling for what might be so <laughs> Sometime. <laughs> Anyways, I'm I Luke and I leave us saying we go we're both really tired. That is a cop, Rachel. It is. You guys, she, we're outside my she's house. Not coming to us. But why did he stop right there? Because somebody he else was know. gonna get in trouble. Why would we get in trouble for sitting he in a truck past outside? And he saw us that we're is in your, the truck. Is your house a drug drop? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we such a magnet for cop activity? <laughs> <laughs> See, he's trying to decide. He's not doing anything about us. No, he is. He's slowly rolling away. I think away. he might be inspecting the neighborhood houses. If he comes around the block, guys, we'll just know that what have you is destined for cop <laughs> interference. <laughs> so, um, anyways, what I'm trying to tell you. He is really slow. He Maybe is. he's no, just he being is. on the phone with someone. Maybe. All right, go ahead. Maybe Sorry. he's podcasting live <laughs> from the streets of Moscow. <laughs> the cop. If he comes back around, though, mercy. Maybe he thinks it'll we're be staking a out the Catholic us. Church. Yeah, it'll be a lesson to us never to podcast after dark. <laughs> the cops will know. <laughs> okay, so Luke and I are sitting out the at the Winco in the parking lot. Trying to ascertain, okay, what do we need All to right. buy in order to be able to feed a bunch of people after, sure. right yeah. after church? 
So, yeah. so we're just sitting there having our, and I guess lest we ever think we're too much of movers and shakers getting too much done. I, I look down and realize that I have recorded on my voice memo app eight minutes of our conversation that we're having in the Winko parking lot. Oh, we eight, can tack it on to our eight. podcast. Well, <clears throat> so then we're both very tired. Okay. So it looks like I'll play that thing. Play that back. <laughs> so we turn it back on, at which we nearly die with the hilarity of our own voice memo. And this is what I mean, lest you think you're really all that. This is just a little bit ago tonight. This is only moments ago, but it was before I got the second wind from laughing so hard at this. <laughs> Are you gonna play it? I gotta play some. Oh, of this. you guys, we get a we get a voice memo of a voice. It's memo. like um. It's like my lunchbox I had when I was a really little kid that had the picture of the same lunchbox on the front of the lunchbox. Oh, man. And yeah. I kept, I always yeah. thought that it actually went on for eternity, that yeah. like the Care Bear or something, it was holding a Care Bear lunchbox that was holding a Care Bear lunchbox <laughs> that was holding. Okay. Here's some, this is just part of it. Certainly isn't the whole depth of the riches, but we laughed until we were like crying. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so <laughs> help me out here, Sporty. What would be a gooder food? <laughs> like a main dish. <laughs> do you think it'd be better to just do something like lasagna? <laughs> Passover chicken with all those chicken thighs. But I think that, that really goes better with sourdough, like crusty bread. And we don't have time to do that. Sourdough is. So. Um, but it's also kind of a... moment from today so 
<laughs> so we're uh, oh, working on our kitchen pantry. So we're trying to finish With this your one up- cabinet. Oh, and wow. the the pantry is basically our scratch page. Like we're just <laughs> we're trying things in the pantry to see if we can do it. So <laughs> so it's like we're gonna see if Ben can build drawers, you know. How does that work? And then can we do a marble countertop and stuff? So anyway, that's today we're trying to finish it off. Ben was well, both of us are trying to cut the marble because that's sort of a two-person job because it's a real slick, it's a real slick endeavor because you have the garden hose, all the water, on it. yeah. So it's basically oh. an impressive scene. Anyhow, so I'm trying to punch the tin for the front of the drawer. And I'm in the house punching the tin, and Ben's outside trying to get the marble cut, and it was... I should say the punch tin is also because it's the potato drawer. We've spoken of this before. You need you need circulation. Anyway, <laughs> so I did that. Anyhow, <laughs> so we've got this situation going on. And then our dog, Daddy, pukes all over the downstairs, like huge mess in the kitchen <laughs> another mess over by the sink i this sort of unfolds upon me as i'm walking in <laughs> to the bedroom cuz i'm also trying to do laundry so i go in it's time to switch the laundry i go in to grab our sheets i catch sight of this in the kitchen and i stand there and i'm like no <laughs> And then I try to take a step. No! And my foot slips. No! And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I am I am standing directly in a pile of vomit, which I had not seen. No! But I was standing in no! it, drinking in the situation that is in the kitchen. Now, ordinarily, the obvious move here would be to make the children clean it up. <laughs> Kids knew what was, was up and they nobody left. Nobody was home. <laughs> it was just Ben and me. <laughs> so, like, Not only that, but it is a little low to ask other people to clean your shoes off for you. <laughs> so uh, I was like, you're joking me. And Ben's outside and I go outside in a wild <laughs> screaming panic. And I'm like, Ben... I can't do it alone. I need, <laughs> I need help. It's so bad. <laughs> and so, um, did you get it? Well, what happened was Ben comes in and I'm like, Ben, I really, I can't, I like, I can't do it. Like, I can't, <laughs> it's really bad. It's not a child of mine. I can't do I'm it. I'm not man enough for them. I'm not man enough. And you are man enough. So he gets the, um, like a dust pan and a piece of cardboard so that he can try to shovel up a bit and, you know, dispose of it. So you've got to get it down to where you can work with the paper towel, but you can't work with it yet because you have to use the, the shoveling mechanisms. So I'm like trying not to look because I really, it's like too much. It was a bridge too far today. And Ben Ben shovels it up and then I'm standing around the corner of the pantry and then he just gags, just gags. And then I start dry heaving in the pantry and then he starts gagging. It was, it was just one of those times as a couple, you know, when you're like, this is real good. This well, we is... did, we did some top shelf parenting today uh, <laughs> when the little boys were outside while Luke was painting. And I don't know why 
but at some point, Shadrach was given permission to do something with an axe. Mm. And okay. I don't know what deed it was he was going to sure. do with it, but he had yeah. the axe. And I came out, and I was like, whoa, what are you doing with the axe? And he was like, Dad said it's okay. And I was like, all right. You know, whatever. Yeah. But later on, we find out that when they went down to visit with the cousin's kids, they took the axe. (laughs) (laughs) And the the Shadrach gave it to one of the other boys and was like, my dad says it's fine. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) So they're trying to, like, axe up some things down there. (laughs) Like, well, that's not it. That's perfect. That's what you wanted to have. Also, a highlight from this week was that I went to a rummage sale with Moses the day after he had looked at all of Nana's pictures from France with her. And he was really full of news about what he heard about France from the pictures because he would tell me spontaneously Mm -hmm. about how there's a tower that they put Christians in. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. that kind of stuff. He's ready for it. We go to a rummage sale at a local church that was built in the 60s, I think, that was pretty... Mm, <laughs> architecturally speaking, it's not it was built shooting in the, 60s. the moon. It was built <laughs> in the 60s. But we pull into the parking lot and Moses goes, oh, are these the ruins? <laughs> I, like, I don't know why, but I think that's, I'm ready to call that church the ruins now because it was and like. probably in some metaphorical sense, it is the I ruins. I was like, interesting, the ruins. This is not the ruins. We don't actually have a ruins here. Have I been around long enough to have a ruins? We have some theological ruins. We have those. We have some. Well, we actually do have ruins, but it's ruins of farmhouses, not not <laughs> castles or no, anything that's of real. ruined barns. Well, I'm glad to know you have better such softies on the oh, vomit now. Dog vomit, Rach. It's not the same. Well, I wouldn't put it in a class... Yeah, really you, below mm. human vomit, <laughs> vomit of all kinds. I could do without. Well, me too. But it was, it was. I'm not gonna, <clears throat> I'm not gonna get into yeah, the deets. I'll believe you. I believe it was you. Not that good. It was a dark time. Mm, no, it's not good. Yeah. So no. Other than John Singer Sargent <laughs> and our <laughs> local home improvement projects, I'll tell you that. Um, I'll oh highlight reel from my new house. Yeah. The things that so far I can tell are good ideas. Sorry. You want a mint? Yeah, I want a mint. Yeah. Um, Thanks. So, there's cinnamon. Thanks. Somehow I feel like you need to be prepared for that. <laughs> um, so, the things that are a really good idea. Okay. I'm Number ready. one, the sink was a really good idea. Good. Want you all to know, that was a good idea. And so... It's working. The sink is working beautifully. Our island is currently sort of a stack of old junky furniture <laughs> that we're checking to see if we want to make into an island. <laughs> and if so, if it's the size that we want it to be, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. But the other thing that's looking really excellent is the under the stairs. Oh, that yeah. has yeah. a big future. Yeah, it has a big future in my sanctification. I suspect <laughs> features heavily. I'll just tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you. It's. I'm. It's gonna be a while before like the shelving is right or thing. You know, before it really, really mm-hmm. makes perfect sense. But we have this under the stair landing. It's like a through passage mm-hmm. that's storage. Anyways, today we finally got all the construction junk out of it. Oh, that's big. Yeah, so you kind of could actually really see big. it as like, mm-hmm. what could we put in here? And we put all of our folding tables oh, man, that's in there. Really nice. We didn't put folding chairs in there, but we will. And it, you can just mm-hmm. tell, like, no, mm-hmm. this is good times. Good yeah. times are going to be had here. Yeah. So that's good. That's awesome. It's, and also... I bought some really good mud mats. That's okay, exciting. tell us about that. That sounds like a hot tip. 
Well, it was funny because I just don't... I grew up in Moscow. Lived here my whole life. We move a couple miles outside of town. And it's like a different world out there. Yeah. It's a whole other thing happening. Mm-hmm. So we were in Lewiston and I went into the North 40 store. Which is the kind of place where they have like... What do they have? Like cattle pens? <laughs> Huge stacks of... <laughs> you just scared her to death. I'm sorry. Huge you did. She I just snor- turned around with a gasp. It's because that was weird and I snorted, but I thought I... <laughs> well, part of passerby talking in another language on the phone in the dark. So... Well, they have, like, huge towering stacks of, like, enormous horse-watering troughs and stuff. Yeah. It's a very inspirational store. <laughs> you go, but, but the funny part was that it seemed so very relevant to my life that mm, we got yeah. there. And I was like, oh, because, because we moved into our house, guys. And just like that, our bird dog, who is a nice dog. Although the evidence does not support that right now. <laughs> Did she puke all over everything? She didn't puke. We moved into our house and to welcome ourselves to the neighborhood, she killed the neighbor's chicken. <laughs> Which is just mean-spirited of her. And we didn't we did not mean to meet and greet with the neighbors like that. But we did. And, and not it's not like someone who just is all about the eggs either. It's someone who has the chickens as like companions. Friends. Yeah. Companion chickens. And then okay. we had the bird dog. I mean, really poor sportsmanship on our part. <laughs> Anyways, then we I had to go to North Forty to buy her a shot collar because she's been living without the law. Mm. And that was part of the problem. But then she got shocked. Uh, she's very sensitive to correction, so she got shocked once. Mm-hmm. Since she's had the shot collar. And now she's like, won't do it. She won't set foot outside without you right there to get her out there. She's okay. being very shy and and regrets her decisions. <laughs> <laughs> but all this is to say, North 40 had a huge pile of like multiple models of mud mats okay. out in the front. Yeah. Turns out we need a mud mat at our house right now. Mm, I need a mud mat. I'm not the same way you don't. I bet you're right. Uh-huh. But I, would... I still need a mud mat. Yeah, but it's like a bouncy rubber thing with big holes in it and, like, nubs. It's like a snow tire, kind of. <laughs> and everything would fall under it. Okay. It's a good call. We're getting boring. Let's think of something else. <laughs> I felt, I actually felt pretty gripped. I was Ooh, like... you think we should make chicken? <laughs> Long pause. <laughs> <gasps> I was kind of like I was. I was working through the issues on whether or not I needed a mud. Well, mat. you might think about it because it's not. It's. It's not something you want to mess with. Is the country mud no. situation? I think when you have a lawn, that will also take some of the edge off. That's our hope. Right but we now, won't have a lawn right now. No, right now you just have a big mud pile. Oh, oh, the other good idea for okay. my house. Yeah. Tour of good ideas. You guys, this one's a real dork of me, but I did it. <laughs> this is a thing I did where you do it knowing the whole time that nobody will think you're normal. And you're like, but. Like, like perhaps punching tin for the front of your potato drawer. Yeah, but I feel like that's more accepted as a thing people might want, which is a punched tin potato drawer. I don't know that it is, Rach. Huh. Well, this is the fact that as when it came... As far as I know, no one's ever been in that market before. Oh, well, when it came to choosing a sink for our master bathroom, oh, I yeah. couldn't be moved by any of the sinks. I was yeah. like, these are just dumb. This is dumb. <laughs> And I don't like it. And I don't like it because it seems really dumb to me. And I just don't know why we're doing this. But the, but the thing is, so we decided to only do one sink. Because it's not like we have incredible sink traffic jams all the time with just the two of us. You know, it's not like an emergency that we each own a sink in the bathroom. So we just did one. But 
then when I went to get the sink, I was like, these are so stupid. I hate these sinks. Yeah. So we bought a kitchen sink for our master. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a one bowl kitchen sink, so it's not like I bought a built in vegetable strainer or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but it has the squirt hose. It, oh, it, really? it, oh, yeah, we totally. We have a big faucet on a kitchen sink with the squirt hose, and I'll tell you, no regrets. <laughs> You just hose out that sink. You just clean it off. Also, you could fill a water bottle if you needed yeah, to. Right. That's you know, big. how often do you just hate that you can't work a sink to do what you want a sink to do? Well, our bathroom sink is a complete flop as far as sinks go. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so I I could get really behind that because even washing your face must be fabulous. Yes, because the faucet comes up and arches right. and our counter is tall so yeah. it's like the water just comes to you you can just drink <laughs> out, you can just drink out the faucet if you wanted to and if that seemed uncomfortable just spray it in your mouth <laughs> okay but here's where i've really taken this to the outer limits of polite society and i really love it which is that we just bought another we have a curig in our bathroom and dish soap and a sponge to wash our mugs out. We can make coffee. It's... I don't even have to leave my bedroom because everything's in there. In the morning, I just come in, get a coffee, get in the shower, get dressed. That's amazing. It's, that is really a highlight for me. What? And I need to be, I need to clarify. It's a, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to belittle our bathroom because I really like it. But this it's not like we were doing a radical luxury spa bathroom. What I'm talking about. It's a nice no size master bathroom. No. No, but we like really we shrunk the master and the master to fit more yeah, kids bedrooms in there and it's very nice sized. It's generous. It's great. It works great. But we're this is not like a spa retreat situation. <laughs> the spa is the fact that it's a kitchen sink. <laughs> And a curry. And a curry. And if that's not enough to make you happy, I don't know what will. <laughs> I actually love that because you would feel like you could wash your mugs in a acceptable way. Yeah. Yeah, and I have a, like a sponge on the little dish beside it, ready to go, like so you can. But that's the other thing that I've always disliked about bathroom sinks, and I realized is that. In a kitchen sink, you always have all the implements right there to clean the sink out. Yeah. And in a bathroom sink, you, there's always this uncertainty about what are you supposed to do with that. Like, <laughs> if you go into a deep clean mode, should you bother with a rag right now? Yeah. Should you get out paper towels and make soggy paper towels? I just, it's never really plain. So, I feel really comforted by knowing my path. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I like it. I like it. It might a be lot. a little dorky, but mm -hmm. I'm happy with it. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. That's good. You wouldn't believe the magnitude of garbage that we appeared to have packed and <laughs> brought to our new. <laughs> oh, I would. I would believe it's it. It's unreal though, because I really thought that we were getting rid of stuff. But did I, I have I said before on the podcast when we moved to England, there was a big fluster of a summer, <laughs> because. We found out in June that Ben got in and we needed to be there in September and our house was torn apart. Shockingly, I know that's a surprise, but our house was torn apart. Mm -hmm. We had to finish a remodel, pack our whole life up, and move across the world. Mm -hmm. So only so pretty low-key, really. Yeah, pretty low-key. Yeah. And it was with only what we could take in our suitcases. And everyone had two 70-pounders, so that was actually quite a hideous amount of luggage, but it was also not nearly enough to live on for a year, so it was right. It was nuanced. And then when we got to England, we, we start unpacking those suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> I had packed a flat, <coughs> a what? flat of mason jars. <laughs> You did it. <laughs> yes, I did. There were the little short Why? ones. <laughs> the little short, wide-mouthed ones. Well, what were you going to do with them? I just made them... felt like it was important to have. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that came with me was that Ben, I remember,
remember Ben's face as he pulled these out of the suitcase and was like, what? <laughs> I packed three large pear-shaped gourds. <laughs> right and then they got married in march so it was a pretty quick turnaround time and they hadn't and they weren't dating very long when they got engaged so it was a pretty quick it was a whirlwind lifestyle and but i remember being i didn't even know heather that well and she had this like all of a sudden uproot and they were going to be in annapolis for like six weeks and then idaho so she was trying to pack yeah. For both, for like, what do we need in Annapolis? Yeah, right. What do we need in Idaho? And what should I get rid of? And what, but all of it has to go somewhere. Oh, yeah. And I remember just being in her bedroom with her while she was just really intensely with some bubble wrap and a piece of scotch tape rolling up a light bulb <laughs> <laughs> to tape it up in bubble wrap. And I was like, I think you can buy those wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I should put this in a box. <laughs> well, that was the thing. And I might need to pack all these plastic hangers. <laughs> I, still, I still have those three pear-shaped gourds because... Well, you hung they, on to them. By the time after, they go over yeah, there... after taking them once, I was like, well, we'd better keep these. I mean... Yeah, I mean, so, these are world-traveling gourds. Yeah, and I remember I used those mason jars as, like, spice jars, but still, like, what a thing to do. <laughs> And it just, I'm just saying that I am with you on the, I moved a bunch of stuff, but why? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think a good filter for my kids' stuff, because when you're trying to help a kid pack, it's just, you know, they're like, no, I love that. You know, and it's a, it's a time of upheaval. So you don't want to just be like, too bad. (laughs) I don't care that you like your bathrobe. It's gone. (laughs) Um, And anyway, so I let them pack some stuff, but. I did find that what lingers in a box in their room after we get there is what they don't actually want. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it's like, oh, I'm not going to get that out of there. That's weird. Mm-hmm. I don't want that. So mm-hmm. we just gather up all of our boxes of garbage every day and try to throw them away. That's what I've been doing, mostly. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Sounds like pro- progress. Yeah. Yeah, it is progress. We have countertops. Well, you have countertops. I have a shard of marble in my pantry. That's good. Mm -hmm. Lucky Mm -hmm. marble shard. We have our... um, I will say our kitchen is big, and we knew it was going to be big. I mean, we wanted it to be big, but we knew when I was working on the layout of the kitchen that it was like, this is not... This is not the cozy little kitchen from your... No. This is not a nook... No. This is a big area. <laughs> and the working tri the work triangle is large. Spread this, out. Yeah, you get a little bit of a and every time we were just making something small in there, you really notice that. You notice the sort of maybe I should do a defensive slide over to the <laughs> fridge, get something out Roller and blades. scooch her back over to the yeah. Rollerblades. But all of it's I mean, some of that we'll figure it out as time goes on. But you're like trying to butter a piece of toast, and it's like a, you know, 400 <laughs> yard dash to get all the <laughs> implements involved. Like, but where's the knife? Oh, all the way over there. Where's the butter? Back to the fridge. Where's the toaster? Nobody knows. That's going to take me a long time. <laughs> and, uh, anyways, we got, but then I did one day of like a lot of baking, and it was like, the kitchen just was very unthreatened by all of the things I had going at once. And that was really fun. That was fun because I was like, this is why yeah. we made this kitchen and it is actually really right for this. That's awesome. It was a really, that was, that was That's happy. Fun. That was a good time. That's awesome. So hopefully we'll do a lot more of that and they will, 
Yeah, you'll get there. Well, that's the dream. I feel like now that we've whittled away the whole evening just being weird. Yeah, we should talk um, about something of value. I have, I have something of value that I want to say. Mm. Um, I like the intro to saying something. I have <laughs> something, something of, of value. value. <laughs> <laughs> Do it back, please. Redeem well, our time. Here's what I've been noticing lately around. Now, this isn't this isn't unusual. This is something we're surrounded by everywhere, but the um disagree with something, right? Let's say you found a thing you disagree with. It doesn't take too much time to find one of those things in person, like with a friend yeah. on the internet, online. Any of Okay. In person, something a person said in your presence one time, something you found oh. on Facebook, any of these things. Here's what I, f- I feel like women need to figure out. <laughs> and I men too, men too, but I think more so the women, young, old, and medium, just disagree with the thing. Don't get mad. Wouldn't that be a treat? <laughs> because because the getting mad because you found a thing I'll that tell you, you disagree with. That's boring. It's well, it's boring and, and it's, it's not also just boring, it's boorish. It's boring, <laughs> it's boorish and it's ungodly. There, well that's more important. <laughs> but but it is really funny to me because it doesn't seem to matter what it is. Like somebody could have said that they disagree with Tylenol and you'll have <laughs> you'll have women getting angry wow. about it. And I just feel like this is so important for women and teaching your daughters to be able to be bigger than the situation. Mm-hmm. Like disagree with it fine, but don't be so threatened by everything. Because I feel like when... You know, it's like being the little dog in a car that's just yes! freaking out. A little bald and, chihuahua. Like, you know, and you want to tell it, like, don't you know that you're parked in the middle of a busy parking lot and you should just <laughs> shut up because <laughs> this is actually not your territory. Yeah. It's not nobody's hurting you. You're just being a dork in there. <laughs> And and a mean dork. Like, nobody yeah, even yeah. thinks, wow, interesting yeah. dog. But it's just so, it's so um, deciding to be threatened by everything. And I think when you're trying to raise your daughters. I actually have, with younger girls, though, younger being, like, college, probably teens, I don't think that they're threatened by it. I think they're looking for, they think that activism of some kind is what gives you meaning or or Mm -hmm. any weight of anything interesting which which if you're a christian teenager college student you're like i just saw a group of bedraggled high school students marching around with lame (laughs) save the planet posters Um, you know like i don't know what they were doing but they needed a cause and that having a cause is like the thing that they f- makes them feel important. Sure. And I think that that's the problem. But is here's that, the thing. Have a cause. That's great. No, no, but I'm saying the problem is that you're, that you're without one because a Christian should never be without a cause because we have the central one, which is sharing the gospel being, you know, like sure. spreading the gospel into our lives. So the, when a girl in the church like freaks out about like, you know, they go on a little rampage about all the women in this church think that eyeliner is <laughs> too much or something, you know. And they go on a little, like, rampage of justice about that. Yeah. It's like, get a bigger perspective. Like, yeah. go ahead and wear the eyeliner, but just don't make a fuss But that's the thing it. is, I think sometimes um, girls feel like it makes them seem tough. It makes them seem like they're like, don't mess with me. Yeah. I am a strong woman with opinions. But it's opposite. But the thing is, is you come off like a old lady, like not a nice pearl, old lady. A pearl clutching situation. Yeah. Like, yeah. like gasping, clutching your pearls, getting offended, screeching at people, <laughs> bossing them around. And, and it really does not actually 
make you seem No, it's very finger tough. wagging. Yeah, it doesn't make you seem tough. It actually makes you seem brittle and threatened and um insecure. And so I feel like let's say you find a thing that you disagree with. Just be bigger than that. Well, like, I have an interesting this laugh is, and move on. This is something I was thinking about. I told you some of this anyways, but it was in a particular situation that I was talking with a friend about something. And we were talking about letting love cover it. So actually we've touched on a number of things. The bird dog was one personality wise. The bird dog. What are we My saying? bird dog killing a chicken. Oh, sure. A lot of these things tie together for me. The metaphor of the bird dog did because okay. I think, I think in many ways I am like a bird dog. Also, I think you are. I think we all are. Our yeah. family is a breed of bird dogs. Yeah. And, but if you think about it, that's a perfectly good, it's a dog that God made for a purpose mm-hmm. with a, with a desire to serve their master, yeah. to do particular things, to find the pheasants in the bushes and run around and flush them out yeah. and make a big to do about it. Right. And it was like, but the, the, there's no sin at all in being a bird dog. There's no sin in having the instinct and having the vision to see something and wanting to do something about it. The sin is when you won't listen to your master yelling, no, right. And you go murder a chicken because you're a bird dog. Like if you're like, yeah. And I'm not just to be clear. I'm not saying the dog was sinning, although very likely she was. But <laughs> I am saying that in in my own behavior, the very things that are virtues that God gave me yep. are vices if they are not in total submission to Him, and exactly. they become destructive. So something that could be constructive yeah. and good turns in that little instant into destructive well because you could have a mother who is devoted to her children to protecting her children right that could be a virtue and it could also turn into a horrific vice well like it's a virtue until all of a sudden she's like i won't let them do that i won't be that you know like where until all of a sudden her instincts are are Slip the drowning chain. out the master's voice and yep. the like no yeah, yeah. her instincts are and taking maybe over maybe you're like well i'm just outspoken and it's like okay right, right. so it so could be a virtue and but actually, it can easily turn into a vice right and if we're talking about my own personality that's the one that we're talking about which is which <laughs> is it could be a virtue to like see the problem like yeah. uh, and want to be like i i would say that i have a Sometimes it's quite useful in really dumb applications, but the kind of problem solving, like you want to sure. solve a problem, like why yeah. can't I fill a water bottle up in my sink? Well, I know what I'll do. Yeah. Whatever. You have a problem solving approach. Well, you can get into a situation where you're like, just get really myopic about the problem, yeah. you know, well, and you like could, wanting to be maybe, like, maybe you're like super tender hearted. <laughs> And that could be a real virtue. It could also turn into cowardice. Right. And, you know, like it could go for right. vice. So well, you the thing have I to... Was gonna, what I was going to try to tie this into is the fact that what struck me... Well, actually, unless you, unless you want to keep talking about that aspect of it. I was just going to say... I really want to keep on talking. Well, I just... I was thinking I was... Ex- I just hope I'm not no, changing too abruptly moving on. I was thinking about... In John, because in the Bible reading challenge, we're just reading John. And there's that part where Jesus is washing Peter's feet. And he goes to wash his feet. And first Peter's like, no, Lord, don't wa- yeah. don't wash my feet. And then Jesus says, like, unless I wash your, like, unless I do this, you have no part of me. Right. Like, and then Peter says, well, then wash my hands and my head yeah. also. And Jesus says, no. And, like, if you've had a bath, it's your feet that need to be washed. And, and I just think that's an interesting thing because do you think Jesus is really giving the hygiene lesson there? Like, uh, yes, but also, (laughs) but also no, because what, what just struck me is that when in dealing with other people, when you have the ability, as I know so many of our listeners do, because so many 
I would say so many eager, active Christian women have a natural inclination towards like seeing the problem. Like right. those young moms are doing something I don't like, you know, or yeah, yeah. this group of women in the church, I don't like that. This, you know, like these, you see a problem and you want to go at it and, and attack it, which is what you're talking about. Like you yeah. disagree with that. And so you want to go like fix it right now. Like I'm going to go get in there and just correct everyone real right. quick. I'm going to get in there and be like, this upsets me the way you run a potluck, <laughs> you know, whatever. So, but the, the thing that just really struck me is that passage that about let love cover a multitude of sins. It's not saying pretend a multitude of sins don't exist. No, it's saying, well, you think God is love. Well, it says essentially we're saying, let God and the love of God cover a multitude of sins. Yeah. What you're saying is, I was just, it just connected in my mind with that John passage. They were saying that if you know someone, if someone is saved, and if you know that they have an active relationship with Jesus, meaning you know he is washing their feet. Right. You know they're saved. You know they have had a bath, right? Yeah. And you know that their feet are clean because you know that they actually do confess their sin and they are like dealing with Jesus. Well, then it's not our job in that case. It's not our job to be running around with though being like, you have a smudge on your face and you have (laughs) this and you have, you know, like kind of like always analyzing the other things that should have been taken care of because that when you say, let's let the love of God cover this multitude of sins, that's you too. You know, it's Mm -hmm. not just your neighbor. Mm -hmm. It's saying, let the love of God cover all the sins that I have that I don't even see. Like, it's not on my radar because if I knew, I would be crushed by this knowledge. Yeah. You know, like, we don't have the capacity to know all of our failings. No. (laughs) Praise the Lord. And I do think that, yeah, that I mean, that loops in with what I was trying to say, too, which is... Well, just, I was trying to loop it in. Yeah, yeah, no, but we meandered in. out and then we came back around. Yeah. But it's like, yes, let love cover it. But it doesn't mean you have to agree with everything anybody says. No, just but... be able to to disagree with something without getting wound up into a schnitzel about it. And right. freaking out to all your well, friends. to what... To what end? Like, and yeah. and this is actually an interesting... This ties in well with the, with the Bible rate challenge. Which is that we have this huge group of women, 17,000 women or something. Really wild differences of opinion in that group. Yeah. On yeah. Facebook. But there is this, the beauty of just the confidence that we all are coming to the word. Yeah. In other words, we're all having our feet washed. Right. We're all coming to the word. We're all being washed in the word. We're all having our savior address our problems. And yep. that and that in doing that, we can let love cover a very vast multitude yeah. of offensive things yep. that we bring up one yeah. to another. And if you have to disagree, if if you have to take it on in some way. Like you can't just scroll past it and be done. Which a lot of, there's a lot of virtue there. Just scroll past, guys. Just let it drift up in your feed. Don't feel like you have to take a plunge in. Also, that's that missionary quote. The need is not the call. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And if you see someone that you think needs to be corrected, it is not the same thing (laughs) as the call for you to go correct. But let's say that it is. It's so important that you be able to be bigger than the situation. Like, that you can l- remain calm. You can let your not heart be, yeah. not be stirred up into a little tempest in a teapot. But you can just be chill mm-hmm. and unthreatened and cheerful and joyful. And you can still disagree with something and uh-huh. not let it ruin your whole afternoon. And that's what I think a lot of women just take it on board and it, let it ruin their whole day because they're so upset about whatever the thing was that the guy said that they well, didn't like. I was talking to someone today among my children. I have children with different tendencies. And I have one child who, when corrected for something, especially in the hustle and bustle of life when mm-hmm. you like just kind of toss out a correction. <laughs> And by correction, I really mean, like, don't do it that. You know, not like a huge deal. 
one who, when surprised by that, is far more likely to argue about it. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't going to, or I wouldn't mm-hmm. do that, or I that wasn't me, or, you know, like, yeah. that, that's the rebuttal that comes yeah. back. And another one whose rebuttal is emotional. Yeah. That, like, if you throw a casual, like, that it would be like, look, even just in body language, look hurt or look. Yeah. And I don't mean neither of these people do this all the time. I'm talking right. about in a moment of weakness. But we were talking about how it's the same thing. It's yeah. the same self-defense response. And yeah. so sometimes if you're really tempted, if someone, if a church lady says something like, let me pick a particularly scandalous one from not long ago. It's probably active in some places. I was going to say yoga pants, but now it's all leggings. Say a church woman says, leggings are completely inappropriate and no Christian woman should wear that in public ever, period. Like, so you may like your leggings and you may wear your leggings to, to the grocery store and to carpool and to everywhere. And if you're feeling stung by someone else's opinion... So, well, in that case, there's a lot of options that are alive in that situation. But but throwing all your emotions into it yeah. is unacceptable. Yep. Like throwing every bit of, because it's exactly like, it's just like throwing a emotional bomb at the situation well, instead of. What you should do is you should say like, oh, I totally and completely disagree. And then you could think, but. I wonder if she's right. Or you could say, that's interesting. Let's think about that. I've been wearing leggings all over the place, and so far, I haven't thought of that. But I'll talk to my husband about it, and I'll pray about it, and I'll think about it. And, and I'll then, actually listen to what you said. And that if later, you're like, you know, I checked all of the places. I'm pretty sure this is not violating a scriptural thing. Here's why I think that they're modest, you know, or whatever. I think you're wrong, but <laughs> I might be that stodgy old lady that would like to offend everyone else. Uh, but I just mean you might you might have a different opinion at the end of the day, but you still have a soft heart but towards you, the woman, towards the issue, yeah. towards whatever. You haven't done a thing where it's you so became... It's so different to do that than to say, I can't believe that she would say something And then to go like call that. all your other friends and slander the woman who said it to get their support in and your emotional like, campaign. Don't you know that my dear friend wears leggings all the time and she's really suffering right now and I can't believe <laughs> that you would say something so hurtful. What's wrong with you? <laughs> your people is why no one stays in church today. <laughs> You're the hypocrite. I mean, yeah. I think just really maybe stuff it a little bit and instead think about the issue without yeah. like detach your own emotional response yeah. from the discussion. Yeah. Don't let your emotions run out there and get covered in mud. I also or... don't, I think that this ties in with, we're going to go over time now. Yeah, about we emotional stop. control. Look I was going to say, don't, don't indulge. It's, <clears throat> it's a bad deal. If you're calling other people to emotionally vent about something to drum up support for oh, how yeah. you feel hurt because you want, you know, that's, that's a bad good. deal. Yeah. So I'm just going to say you shouldn't be doing that. But, no. but, after that, you should also not be indulging in private bouts of no. crazy self-indulgence about that no. kind of thing either. And so the idea is if you're really offended by something, I would say it's not just what you shouldn't do. It's what you should do, which is give it to God open-handedly. Like, yeah. Lord, that made me uncomfortable or that, you know, like, but is this of you that you want me to feel this is this you know like and work it out with god and not with everybody else before you finish the conversation and also if someone throws in a rebuke to you sometime or something painful comes up suddenly it's always a good idea to just say i'll think and pray about it yeah and i'll get back to you instead of you don't need to have the whole argument right you know if someone's like Here's what I'm going to do. I want to tell you all the things you're doing wrong. Yeah. You're say, I'll pray about that. Yeah. And then see you later. Yeah. Thanks for the input. Yeah. So. Well. We should shut we up should now. We should shut up. We should. Indeed. We should start talking about some lame menu we could plan for something. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it pans out for you tomorrow. I hope so too. And I think hot you, tip you guys, should hope. 
Install a kitchen sink in your bathroom. You'll love it. Hot, hot tips. All <laughs> right. Until next time. Bye-bye.